Greetings, saints. Today's lesson is a very special lesson, a very heartfelt lesson amongst the saints, wherein we are going to unveil yet another milestone of Jesus Passion Week. We're going to go in and review and reflect upon the Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples before he was portrayed and taken into custody for the sake of securing our salvation. It is incumbent upon us, the church, the body of Christ, the believers, you and I, to remember this sacred ordinance, this mandate given to us by Jesus Christ himself. Can we talk about it? Let's go in. Greetings and praise the Lord, saints all over the world. I am Minister Coleman and I welcome you back to Christian's Endeavor. Today we will be discussing our Sunday School lesson dated for April the 10th, 2022. Our lesson topic for today is Passover with the King. And we're coming out of the 26th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew, and we will be reading our text from the 17th through the 30th verses. Last week, we were in the 21st chapter of St. Matthew, and we are moving right along up until the end of the week, which will climax with Jesus' crucifixion and on the first day of next week, the resurrection. So we thank God for your coming back and just wanting to gather with us as we talk a bit about this word. We love the word and I thank God for you. I thank God for all of the new subscribers. I thank God for the likers and the special comments that you have left and I encourage you to continue doing so because somebody is gonna read your comments and I pray that they will be encouraged to come over and or stay on the Lord's side. And as always, I like to encourage you to drop down the description box underneath of the video and or the arrow that gives you more information about the video for in that box, that special box of treats, you're going to find your spiritual arsenal that will consist of a special playlist of worship that is catered towards the lesson's topic. You're also going to have a Bible link where you can be able to access the word, the scriptural text that we're utilizing in the lesson in case you are on the run and you may not have your Bible. So if you click that link, you're going to be able to follow us in scripture with the word from the New Living Translation. You also have some other endeavors that will enrich your spiritual absorption of the lesson. We have something in there for our youth. And if you don't have youth that's in your household, perhaps you can share that link with another youth somewhere else and be available to discuss it with them. Uh, we may also include a puzzle, something for the mind to just invigorate your mind as you are holding on to this lesson and marinating with it before the Sunday comes. Amen. And we also have links for um, anyone that may come across a station that may be in need of help. Amen. Uh, those links are provided there. The link and also a prayer of salvation. If you are unsaved, remember that Sunday school is just not about teaching a lesson and going through the motions. After this message and the lesson, we are hoping to draw someone closer to Christ, amen, so that their soul can be saved. That's what it's really all about, amen. And lastly, for this week's 
lesson, we are preparing ourselves for virtual communion. And so with that being said, we're going to include our uh, reading of the Lord's Supper in the link um, or in the description box to this lesson. And we ask that you will come back and check again this same video at the end of the week for we're preparing ourselves that a little closer to the time of April the 10th, which will actually be the second Sunday. And we want to be able to partake in that virtual communion. All right. So in other words, you have to stay tuned to the announcements. Amen. And stay tuned to the video and to the channel. Amen. So again, our lesson topic is Passover with the King. Matthew, the 26th chapter, the 17th through the 30th verse. And our key verse for this lesson is verse 29. And it states, mark my words. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. We're still in the spring quarterly of God frees and redeems. And our unit focus is liberating gospels. Let's say a prayer and get on into our lesson. Lord God, we come into your presence. Thanking you for the gathering of your people, Lord God. Thanking you for your word. Thank you for the significance of this lesson. And Lord God, we ask that you would now open up our hearts and our minds. Allow your servant to be able to teach with all clarity and understanding. That we would take away from this lesson the concepts and the precepts and the principles that you would have us to be mindful of and also to be able to apply towards our lives. Lord God, we thank you for securing our salvation on the cross, Lord God. Thank you for this fellowship dinner of the Passover, the Lord's Supper, communion, that allows us to be able to remember that which you have done. Lord God, again, be with us as we go into this lesson. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Now, our lesson comes out of this book of Matthew. And when we take a moment just to focus a little more on our topic, um, what do you think about it? The Passover with the King. Amen. Passover with the King. What do we think about when we hear the word Passover? Uh, a few words come to mind. First of all, Passover is not just a meal, but it represented passing over, something passing over, amen? Um, this trouble, this threat, passing over. Um, and we understand that in the Old Testament, as it pertains to the children of Israel, who uh, was able to escape out of Egyptian bondage with the leader, Moses, and how God told them, this is it. Prepare yourselves because I'm getting ready to deliver you. But before I deliver you, I'm sending one last plague. And that last plague was the death angel. And God told Moses to tell the people to kill a lamb, take the blood from that lamb, and put the blood above the door seal and above the window seals. So that when I unleash this death angel, that it will pass over. It will recognize the blood and it will pass over. So in that, we see that this Passover kind of reminds us about protection. So we see protection. We also think about how God had promised to deliver the children of Israel. And that's two more words that we equate to this Passover. Deliverance and promise. We also think about fellowship. Because it was the custom of the Jews to have a Passover meal um, with each other. Amen. Uh, and so we think about fellowship. We think about relation. Amen. And the fact that when we bring Passover all the way up into the New Testament, that it is our way of being able to relate to Christ, being able to relate to the Old Testament, children of Israel and what they were brought out of, 
and we bring it into the new of remembering and reflecting upon all of the benefits and the blessings that we are partakers of as we commune with Christ and the meaning of the Passover. We also think about liberation. It's one thing to be delivered, but it's another thing to have sustained liberation. And so we think about liberation. We think about sacrifice. We think about the sacrifice that was made in the Old Testament with the lamb and the blood. And now we think about the New Testament, the lamb, Jesus Christ, and his blood, which sets us free. So those are a few things that I don't know if it goes to your mind. If it does, give me a thumbs up on that. Uh, but this is what I think about when I think about Passover. And I just love that word because we are living in a day and a time where there's so much danger, so much evil and hate around. And it's very easy for us to embrace that word and the promises behind that word that just like God brought the children of Israel out, we are the New Testament children of Israel. And if we would just have that word that God let this thing, let this threat, let this sickness, let this disease, let this time of trouble pass over. Amen. Uh, so we can appreciate this word Passover. And then we talk about the king. Passover with the king. Hmm. Jesus is that king. Jesus, the king, is our Lord. Have you made him Lord of your life? Jesus is also uh, reflected as he dines with uh, his disciples. He's reflected not only as a leader, but also as a friend. Um, when we think about the king, we think of the prophecy that preceded Jesus. Amen. Uh, we think about the fulfillment that we now know he has done on our behalf. Amen. And we think about Jesus as king, as being a ruler and a reigner. Amen. And then we also think about him being a martyr. Amen. A martyr for the sake of the gospel. Amen. He had to die in order that we might be free. And so these are all of the thoughts to come to mind when I think about the lesson topic, Passover with the King. Well, a little bit about the famous writer of our text. That is Matthew, also called Levi. So Matthew, certainly one of the original 12 disciples who will go on to become an apostle of Christ, apostle being sent by Christ. Matthew was a tax collector um, and or a publican. Um, he collected taxes and back in that day a tax collector and or a publican was not the most popular person. In fact they were perceived as thieves oftentimes because they had the ability to raise the prices of goods and whether it was justified or not, and pocket that additional money. Amen. In other words, we would probably say that they were price gougers. <laughs> Amen. But Matthew, one thing that's significant about him is that when Jesus called him to be recruited as a disciple, the scripture says that he left everything behind, his job, his business, his money, amen, and he went on to follow Jesus, and he never turned back, amen, and so we could take a little bit from Matthew, amen, the sacrifice, the self-sacrifice that he made, amen, most people don't want to give up their job, most people don't want to give up their titles, uh, they don't want to give up making a fat paycheck or having um, an inflated bank account for Jesus and or for the cause of Christ. 
So we take something very esteemable from Matthew. Matthew, when he wrote his book, he wrote to the audience of the Jews. Amen. That was his primary audience. And he wrote Jesus in the view of being the king. Yeah, he wrote Jesus is already being the king. The book of Matthew is said to have the most Old Testament references about Jesus and especially the prophecy of Jesus coming. Amen. So that is very significant that we will find in Matthew's book. And remember, Matthew was a part of four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, they all have very similar accounts about Jesus, about the ministry of Jesus, the life, the death, the resurrection, and um, as Jesus prophesied him coming back, the word is called synoptic. They call them synoptic Gospels because they are similar in the facts that they would write. But we equate Matthew with having some special references about Jesus. He talks about Jesus' highs and he also talks about his lows. He talks about his highs in that Jesus was the proclaimer of the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and that Jesus worked many miracles, um, that Jesus demonstrated his power. Power over what? Power over sickness and disease. Power over demons. Power over men. Power over nature. Power to forgive and heal the sin-sick soul. Power over death. Power over physical and spiritual blindness. The power certainly to proclaim the gospel good news. But then he also talked that there were lows of Jesus' ministry. And those lows would primarily consist of all of the many ways that Jesus would receive rejection. Although he came to save those who were lost, he came to bless, he came to give life, he would be rejected. Amen. And Matthew, as we close out his chapter, we are mindful of that great commission that he writes about and that Jesus tells us in chapter 28 um, to go. Go, therefore, teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things. And lo, I will be with you even until the ends of the world. So we thank Matthew for, he took us out on a very good note because this was the base of Jesus' ministry that he did all these things. He taught his disciples. He recruited other disciples. He trained up apostles and all of the other ministries under the kingdom so that we can go out and we can share that word with others so that their soul could be saved. Amen. So we thank Matthew for what he has brought us. And so when we go into our lesson today, it picks up about at that 17th verse, but it's not without recognizing what has already transpired from verses 1 through 16, because Jesus is continuing in his fellowship conversation with the disciples. But even in those first 16 verses, Jesus was basically talking to his disciples about how the kingdom will look um, when he comes and how it should look right now and how we should prepare ourselves for his coming. Amen. He was very adamant because he knew he did not have long to be with them. So we thank God for all of the red writing that we see in the Bible. We do nothing but focus on the red writing in the Bible, which is portrayed as Jesus' words. 
then certainly that is a mouthful within itself. Uh, lessons to be taught and gleaned directly from the mouth of God. So in that first verse of chapter 26, we see that Jesus openly um, expressed that as he is at this festival of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, that he will be betrayed and crucified. He spoke that at the outset. It was no surprise to Jesus as to the events that were going to take place after this Last Supper. We move down to about verse 3, and there we will see uh, many of uh, the assembly of the enemies of Christ um, coming together in cahoots, amen, the chief priests, the scribes, the elders, Caiaphas, who was the high priest, and how they all consulted and devised that they were going to catch Jesus and that they were going to kill him, amen. And uh, they even said, look, this is what the plan is, but we're going to delay this plan because we have a lot of visitors in town, a lot of pilgrims who have come and traveled here for the Passover, and we don't want to stir up nothing with them, amen, and, and they seeing what's going on. So let's wait until the end of the week when this Passover festivities are over. But even that they didn't have control over because Jesus said, my hour has come. And Jesus began to initiate the events that would lead up to his sacrifice. Amen. And even still, uh, with the uh, many, uh, many people, thousands of people who had came to Jerusalem, uh, they wanted up being spectators and some participators because we will recognize them as some of the voices that's going to be in the crowd when they ask, do you want Barabbas or do you want Jesus? And some of them, spectators, probably half of them may know what was going on, but that's the energy you get a lot of times when you're following with the crowd, amen? You just want to blend in, um, so you just go along to get along. And many of them will say, crucify him. Crucify Jesus. Amen. That seems to be the popular word. Yeah, I'm with that. Go ahead and crucify Jesus. Amen. And so then we move down to that 14th verse um, that's right on the brink of bringing us into our lesson. And we remember this um, occasion where Mary, um, Martha's sister, broke a vow of oil, very expensive oil, her alabaster box. And she anointed Jesus' feet and wiped the oil off with her hair. Amen. And it was Judas and some of the other disciples also that stood back and was like, What? How you put that hurt? How you? You know how much that oil cost, Jesus? Okay. So they did not like the fact that she had anointed Jesus with this expensive oil. And I think this was the straw that probably broke the camel's back with Judas. <laughs> because the scripture says right after that, he was like, that's it. <laughs> he left out and went to go locate the chief priest and, and formulated to carry out his plan to betray Jesus. So that brings us up to our 17th verse where we are going ahead and kick off this lesson. Very familiar lesson, but we cannot uh, reemphasize the principles that we get and the blessings that we get when we go back over uh, this text as it pertains to the Passover and or the Lord's Supper. And so we pick up with verse 17. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked. And these disciples are stated over in Luke, the 22nd chapter, about the 8th verse as being Peter and John. Well, they asked, where do you want us to prepare the Passover meal for you? So now they are acting not just as disciples, 
but they also have the task of being servants, amen, hospitable servants, right? That's what it's all about. We as Christians, we are multitask, amen? We not just save, but we save to work, amen? Uh, verse 18 says, as you go into the city, Jesus told them, you are going to see a certain man. Tell him, the teacher says, my time has come. And I will eat the Passover meal with my disciples at your house. Wow. So it sounds definitely like Jesus had made prior arrangements with this individual. He basically RSVP'd. He reserved his place for a very uh, important person, a man and or important people. Jesus entourage, his inner circle, his 12 uh, beloved disciples. Now look at that because this was going to be Jesus last time dining with them as disciples. He had dined with them on many other occasions, but this here, this is why we classified as the last supper. Amen. Uh, and this is it. After this, after the dinner and they take their evening stroll, this is when Jesus will become apprehended by his enemies and by the betrayal of Judas. Um, but Jesus is showing us here, hey, we can take this into our lives today. If there's something important to you uh, that you need to fulfill, he shows us that you need to plan in advance. Amen. Don't wait until the last minute. Because remember, mind you, it was going to be thousands of people that was going to be entering Jerusalem for this feast. And many of them were going to be looking for a place to be able to host their gathering, um, to be able to partake in this Feast of Unleavened Bread. And so Jesus made prior arrangements. Jesus is on a mission. Jesus is making all days count. Amen. We should be the same way. Jesus knew afar off. He had all of this in the plans. All of it is in the works of when this was all going to go down. The Last Supper was going to be right before his uh, betrayal. So he had all of this planned out. When we have things planned out in our head, it's time to make those arrangements in the natural. Amen. Uh, and not wait until the last minute. So verse 19 comes and tell us that the disciples, Peter and John, they did exactly what Jesus told them. And they prepared the Passover meal there. And so look at their obedience. This is why they were so close to Jesus. Jesus choosing Peter to be the head of the church. He said, on this rock, on you, Peter, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail. And look at John, how John came to us, not just with the gospels, but the three epistles of John. And then John will come right back and provide for us Revelation, the very last book of the Bible. So two significant individuals that were a part of Jesus in a circle. Amen. And so they were obedient to the letter. Amen. They were not indifferent. They were not distracted about the task that Jesus sent them out on. They were not lazy, right? Amen. They didn't share their own opinions. Well, Jesus, look, uh, I know you want to have this dinner, but maybe we can forego the dinner. Remember, Jesus, if you go to Jerusalem, there's a lot of trouble there that can be waiting for you. Jesus, come on. They didn't give all of that. They took Jesus. Uh, he gave them instruction, directive, and they went forth. Amen. So we thank God for this demonstration of Peter and John, disciples. That's what a disciple is. A disciple follow Jesus, right? A disciple follows Jesus. We don't make up our own thing. Amen. We are supposed to follow what Jesus has told us, amen, and laid out before us. And so we move into verse 20. When it was evening, Jesus sat down. He reclined uh, at the table with the 12, okay? So evening time certainly would be the time that they would go in to, or that would kick off the Sabbath, right? Um, 
And so they prepared all day. Um, they apprehended their animal um, that they were going to kill as far as a sacrifice for themselves. And evening comes and they ready to dine. And so it tells us that the hour was come and Jesus sat down to remember and to give thanks. That's what this Passover meal was all about. Amen. And look at that. Because the scripture says, verse 20, that it was the 12. So at this time, no one ever suspected that Judas would be the one to betray Jesus. No one ever suspected. Oh, he wouldn't have been invited to the dinner. <laughs> How many of y'all know that? Amen. Or they probably would have, I want to say, like put some poison in his food. Uh, something uh, to get him away from the table. You're not worthy to partake in this dinner. But, hey, Jesus left him in the circle. Amen. He let him sit and dine with him, knowing that he will soon betray him with that kiss. Verse 21. While they were eating, he said, I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Look at Jesus. This is his omniscience uh, being displayed, being revealed. How many of you know that there's nothing hidden, especially in our hearts, that Jesus doesn't already, and in, in, the, in the light of his word, doesn't already reveal, amen, and discern. Uh, but Jesus here is letting Judas know and an indirect way that I already know what you up to. Amen. I already know what you up to. And so 22 says that the disciples became greatly distressed. And each one asked in turn, am I the one Lord? Is it me? Oh my goodness. Is it me? Because they already knew that Jesus had insight to see through them. Jesus could see the heart. Amen. And so they asked him, is it me? Wow. You know, we should be asking that same question today. When we go about our daily and we sin and we know we sin, some of us deliberately plan to sin, we should be asking this same question. Is it me? That is betraying you, Jesus. That is betraying the cross. That is betraying your shed blood. I won't wait for the answer. Verse 23, he replied, One of you has just eaten from this bowl with me that will betray me. Wow. Jesus is like putting Judas now on spiritual blast. He ain't pointed him out, but there's no way that Judas cannot feel the guilt and not know that the spotlight of Jesus' eyes is now on him. Wow. Wow. Verse 24. For the Son of Man must die, Jesus says, as the scripture declared long ago. But how terrible it will be for the one who betrays him. It will be far better for that man and or men because it wasn't just Judas, mind you. It wasn't just Judas that betrayed Jesus if he had never been born. And so you think about, and I, 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 we talked about this back up in the third verse, I think, of this same chapter, how this assembly got together in cahoots to entrap and kill Jesus. They wanted to execute him. Amen. And don't you know that judgment is knocking at their door as well. Amen. They did not go away scot-free and leave Judas to be just a scapegoat on his own. No. All of them going to be judged. Amen. They are all going to be judged for their role in Jesus' crucifixion. And verse 25 says... Judas, the one who would betray him, also asked, Rabbi, am I the one? I can imagine his face, how he probably standing there being arrogant. Rabbi, he didn't even call him Lord, 
you going you going to call him rabbi yes he was a rabbi he was a wise teacher yeah but why not lord i'm sure all of the other disciples were referring to him by this time as lord right he was not just a teacher he was not just a prophet he is savior and lord amen and at this point he is lord over them amen Judah say, am I the one? And Jesus responds and tell him, you have said it. In other words, if the shoe fit, wear it, right? You said it, not me. Let's go on to verse 26. As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Thank God for that. He gave thanks. He broke it into pieces and gave it to the disciples saying take this and eat it for this is my body and so Jesus here as he takes this bread and he blesses this bread the reflection of blessing this bread which represents and which will represent his broken body is a blessing for the past. We thank God because Jesus had been prophesied way back in time in the Old Testament that he would come and that he would present himself as our sacrifice. So past, present, he's given thanks for present tense that now He's getting ready to go forth and do what had been prophesied for many years to present himself on our behalf as our lamb. But not just that, but also blessing this bread for its future benefits that it will be to all who believe. That blessing covers all of that. Amen. And verse 27 says, and he took a cup of wine and gave thanks to God for it. He gave thanks to God for it. Wow. This reminds us to say our grace. This is why we say our grace before we partake in consuming food in our body. That it may be to the nourishment of our body, but that also we will be able to extract the meaning sometimes there's meaning with the foods that we eat amen extract that meaning out of it so we say our grace and the scripture says that he gave it to them this cup and said each of you drink from it when i read that what came to mind is that this cup was representative of the cup of suffering because he knew he was getting ready to shed his blood for many. And so mind you the story about the lady who asks, um, Lord, when you come into your kingdom, can my two sons, can they sit with you, you know, at your side when you come into your, your kingdom? And Jesus' response to her was like, excuse me, you don't know what you're asking for. Do you think your sons are prepared to suffer the way I'm getting ready to suffer? So when Jesus gives this cup to his disciples around this table, it makes me realize that yes, all of Jesus' disciples, to include us, have to partake in a part of his suffering. Somebody said, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone. Surely there's a cross for me. So when I think about what Jesus did here in this act that he passed his cup around and he told all of them, all of them. Nobody's no exceptions. Everybody's going to have to pay a price. Everybody's going to have to go through. Drink from it. Everybody. And had they known the gruesome 
suffering that Jesus was on the verge of going through for the sake of the cross, they probably would have been like, mm, that's okay, Jesus, I'm fasting on, on, on that drink right there. That's okay, I don't want it. Jesus said, drink it, all of you, because he knew that all of us have to partake. Amen. As his disciples, we also must partake in a portion of suffering. Amen. So let's go to 28 as we read the balance of this 27th verse. And he said, for this is my blood, which confirms or seals or ratifies the new covenant between God and his people. What does he mean by confirms the new covenant? He is saying that to take of this blood, it confirms and or seals. And this is a prophetic word because he's not yet crucified. He has not yet died, been crucified, put on a cross, rose again, all of this has not yet taken place, but Jesus is prophetically speaking here with his disciples and saying that this confirms the new covenant, the new promises, the new protections, the new blessings, and the redemptive power that will be in me, right? Through the blood that I'm getting ready to shed on the cross. Wow, he had it all figured out. And we think about this, he says, it is poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. And when we reflect on that, that just brings me back to God's word in John 3.16. That God so loved the world, the world, many in the world, that he gave his life. Amen? It was a one time for all, everybody. Amen? And then verse 29 says, again, mark my words. I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And our last verse, then they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. And this Mount of Olives is, um, actually, it houses the, the garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus would be captured uh, by these enemies, amen, and taken into custody. So, that completes the verses of our lesson. A few things that we just need to take away from this lesson um, that we need to remember and reflect and rehearse what all the significances are of this Passover meal, also referred to as the Lord's Supper, also referred to as the Last Supper, also referred to as Holy Communion and or the Feast of Communion. Um, what are we to remember? The Old Covenant. What God did for the children of Israel back in their deliverance from Egypt. And also the new covenant, what Jesus has done and is still doing even yet today because of his body and because of his blood and because of him triumphing over the cross. We want to remember the ministry, the love, the relationship, the sacrifice of Christ. What are we reflecting on? Huh? When we reflect, that's deep. That's deep. Okay? We're reflecting on the gift of love that Jesus brought unto us. This was the gift of love that God arranged through Jesus Christ to give to the world. Amen? Are you in the world? Well, this gift belongs to you if you will accept it. Amen? Just accept it. We reflect upon the suffering. We do some deep thinking. Considering all that Christ went through. On our behalf. He did it. Because he loved us. Amen. That's why he did it. He loved us and he knew. That someone had to die. 
and he had chosen to die for all mankind. Amen. We rehearse. This is why we are continuously partaking in the Lord's Supper. Because we are rehearsing. Jesus said in his word that as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. So he wanted us to do this often. He wanted us to have the fellowship where we can think back, where we can commemorate and uh, memorialize what was done for his people in the Old Testament, but moreover, what he has done for us as believers underneath of the new covenant. Um, we are to rehearse and be thankful. We are to rehearse and understand why it is important that we live holy lives. Amen. He did not get up on the cross and go present himself even before that as a sacrifice so that we can live any kind of way. So we are required to live a holy life if we truly believe and appreciate that which Jesus is on the verge of doing here in this lesson, on the verge of doing. But now we know that he has fulfilled uh, our redemption, amen, by him sacrificing himself on the cross. We also want to rehearse as a daily thing all of the benefits that we come away with because of him, because of what he did for us and what he gave to us by giving of himself. We need to rehearse that. And that's why when we eat of the cracker, when we eat of the bread, we reflect. When we think of uh, what's in the little vial of juice, but we symbolically re recognize that as being his blood. When we reflect upon that, that's why we can appreciate and it tastes so good in our mouths because we think about the sweet benefits that he died to give us. Amen. And lastly, we can rehearse how and why we need to present ourselves as a living sacrifice, self-sacrifice. Amen. That is our duty to present ourselves as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. Amen. From now until the time he comes back to get us. Amen. And all of these things combined together, if we will remember, if we will reflect, if we would rehearse, it all makes us ready for his coming when he returns for us. Amen. This concludes our lesson for today. Um, a little bit in depth about this very familiar passage of scripture. And certainly, um, if you are a believer linked up with the church and or virtually, you have heard about communion, Holy Communion, the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper. And so we thank you and we pray that something in this lesson again has reinvigorated or refreshed you in this word and inspired you um, to look forward to every opportunity that you have to be able to have this fellowship with Jesus, be it one-on-one -on -one, if you are part of a congregation or even a virtual congregation, um, that you are able to remember, just remember, amen, Passover with the King, Jesus. So I thank you and I'm sending you off. Amen. Have a very, very great week ahead. Stay safe and God willing, I will see you again next Sunday. God bless.